Love and Friendship and Other Early Works by Jane Austen. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Chad Horner. Love and Friendship and Other Early Works by Jane Austen. Leslie Castle. Letter the first is from Miss Margaret Leslie to Miss Charlotte Luttrell. Leslie Castle, January third, seventeen ninety two. My brother has just left us. Matilda, said he at parting, you and Margaret will I am certain take all the care of my dear little one, that she might have received from an indulgent and affectionate and amiable mother. Tears rolled down her cheeks as he spoke these words. The remembrance of her, who had so wantonly disgraced the maternal character, and so openly violated the conjugal duties, prevented his adding anything farther he embraced his sweet child and after saluting matilda and me hastily broke from us and seating himself in his chaise pursued the road to aberdeen never was there a better young man ah how little did he deserve the misfortunes he has experienced in the marriage state so good a husband to so bad a wife for you know my dear charlotte that the worthless louisa left him her child and reputation a few weeks ago in company with dambers and dishonour never was there a sweeter face a finer form or a less amiable heart than louisa owned her child already possessed the personal charms of her unhappy mother may she inherit from her father all his mental ones leslie is at present but five-and-twenty and has already given himself up to melancholy and despair what a difference between him and his father sir george is fifty-seven and still remains the beau the flighty stripling the gay lad the springly youngster that his son was really about five years back and that he has affected to appear ever since my remembrance while our father is fluttering about the streets of london gay dissipated and thoughtless at the age of fifty-seven matilda and i continue scheduled from mankind in our old and mouldering castle which is situated two miles from perth on a bold projecting rock and commands an extensive view of the town and his delightful environs but though retired from almost all the world for we visit no one but the milliads the mackenzies the mcphersons the mccartneys the macdonalds the mckinnons the millilands the mckays the macbeths and the macduffs we are neither dull nor unhappy but on the contrary there never were two more lively more agreeable or more witty girls than we are not an hour in the day hangs heavy on our hands we read we work we talk and when fatigued with these employments relieve our spirits either by a lively song a graceful dance or by some smart bon mot and witty repartee we are handsome my dear charlotte very handsome and the greatest of our perfection is that we are entirely insensible of them ourselves but why do i thus dwell on myself let me rather repeat the praise of our dear little niece and the innocent louisa who is at present sweetly smiling in a gentle nap as she reposes on the sofa the dear creature is just turned of two years old as handsome as though two and twenty as sensible as though two and thirty and as prudent as though two and forty to convince you of this i must inform you that she has a very fine complexion and very pretty features that she already knows the two first letters in the alphabet and that she never tears her frocks if i have not now convinced you of her beauty sense and prudence i have nothing more to urge in support of my assertion and you will therefore have no way of deciding the affair but by coming to leslie castle and by a personal acquaintance with louisa determine for yourself ah my dear friend how happy should i be to see you within these venerable walls it is now four years since my removal from school has separated me from you that two such tender hearts so closely linked together by the ties of sympathy and friendship should be so widely removed from each other it is vastly moving i live in perthshire you in sussex we might meet in london where my father disposed to carry me there and where your mother to be there at the same time we might meet at bath at tunbridge or anywhere else indeed could we but be at the same place together we have only to hope that such a period may arrive my father does not return to us till autumn my brother will leave scotland in a few days 
he is impatient to travel mistaken youth he vainly flatters himself that change of air will heal the wounds of a broken heart you will join with me and i am certain my dear charlotte in prayers for the recovery of the unhappy leslie's peace of mind which must ever be essential to that of your sincere friend m leslie end of letter the first is from miss margaret leslie to miss charlotte by jane austen this recording is in the public domain